Hey world and happy Halloween! <laughs> well, actually, while I'm recording this, it's still September. <laughs> but when you watch this, it'll be October. So that means it's time for all things spooky. And today I'm sharing with you my spooky October TBR. Now, <laughs> two disclaimers before I start this video. Actually three. First one is I'm a little bit sick, so sorry if my voice sounds weird. Um, no worries, it's nothing serious, it's just a little cold. Um, but the actual two disclaimers. The first one is I'm one of those people who you'd call like faint of heart. <laughs> so um, none of these books are actually really spooky. Well, except one, we'll get to that. Um, but most of these are just like kind of I don't know, magical or like, yeah, supernatural, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I'm really scared of <laughs> scary stuff. Um, I get nightmares really quickly um, and very easily. And so none of these books today, well, except for one, as I said, <laughs> um, I get to that in a second, but most of these books are actually kind of not scary. But anyways, <laughs> This is what my version of October and Halloween looks like, so just go with it. <laughs> um, and the second one is that this is quite a big TBR, um, and I already know that I'm not going to read most of the books of this list. Um, so maybe more like a wish list? It's kind of more like... Um, I have all these books that are kind of supernatural and I want to read them anyway, so if I'm gonna read something in the month of October, I might as well pick something from this list to match the theme. So I'm not gonna read everything from this list, probably not gonna read most of the books from this list if we're being honest, um, but everything I'm gonna read in October is from this pile of books. So yeah. That's that's how this TBR works. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. As I said, one of these books is actually pretty scary for my standards. Um, so let's start with this one first. And it is The Empire of the Vampire by J. Kristoff. Oh my god, this title is so fucking gorgeous. <laughs> I love this title so much. It rhymes. It's funny. I love it. Um, I have actually already started this book. I'm at page 35 and then I had to stop because it was too scary and I was getting nightmares. <laughs> there you go. Um, as I said, faint of heart, that's how it works. Um, but basically, I love Jay Kristoff, obviously. He's like a genius when it comes to fantasy and supernatural. Um, <clears throat> and when I saw that we had this in the store, I just picked it up and saw the title, saw the cover, which is also just stunning. It has illustrations that look kind of like tarot cards. It's quite a chunky book, um, but you know, I thought, why not? <laughs> it looks really cool, why not pick it up? Um, and it's actually like the first few pages that I read sounded very, very funny. Um, and it does still keep that tone, like the few chapters I've read so far are actually really funny and sarcastic. Um, just the content got really bloody really quickly and I couldn't handle it. Um, so I do want to finish this book, I at least want to give it another try. Um, I think it's a really interesting story um, because it's about the last vampire hunter who gets captured by the vampires and obviously thinks they're gonna like destroy him. But then this vampire historian shows up in his cell and asks him to tell his life story so that he can write it down for the history books. Which is like a really weird dynamic and the two of them bounce off of each other really funnily and sarcastically and the dynamic is really interesting. Um, so I am quite intrigued by that. Um, as I said, the writing style is more on the humorous side and it's also just like really beautifully written. I really want to try to read this book um, because I did enjoy what I've read so far. It just got a bit too scary 
to read it at night, which was also just a dumb idea. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna try to read this. Um, I'm gonna read it during the daylight, um, probably in the mornings, just so that I have an entire day of other stuff before I have to go to bed. Um, but yeah, I did enjoy it so far. I just need to get better about not reading it right before I sleep, because that's how nightmares exist. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the first one. And the second one is also quite chunky, which I did not expect. And that is Anyway the Wind Blows by Rainbow Rowell, which is obviously very, very high on my TBR. This is the third part of the series. Um, if you don't know about this series, then where have you been? It's just amazing. Um, so yeah. I'm really, really excited to get back into the story of Simon and Bess. I've got this gorgeous uh, special edition with like the rose edges. It's really, really pretty. But yeah, it is quite a lot heavier than I expected in comparison to the first two books. So I'm a little bit scared, a little bit intimidated. Um, but yeah, also just really, really excited to get back into that phenomenal wizarding world. Um, I'm really excited to see how she wraps up this series and what happens and like why there are so many pages. <laughs> um, so yeah, really, really excited. Um, this is probably like the highest one on my TBR at the moment. Um, along with the one that I actually don't have yet. But I did pre-order TJ Clunas next book, which is under the whispering door, I want to say, um, because his other book, The House in the Quirillion Sea, was my favorite book of the year. Oh my god, it was so fantastic. I fell in love with every single character in that book. It is just... <laughs> it's one of those books... <sighs> it's one of those books. <laughs> Basically, I read it and I completely fell in love with it. And then I gave it to my parents and they fell in love with it. And then I gave it to my co-workers and they fell in love with it. And then I gave it to some of my customers and they fell in love with it. I haven't heard a single person not enjoy this book. So obviously I'm expecting big things from Under the Whispering Door. So I'm really, really excited about it. Um, it's about death, which is cool. I just, that's an interesting story. Um, like kind of about the afterlife, I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't looked into it too much because I kind of want to surprise myself. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really excited about it. I have pre-ordered it and I'm hoping that it's gonna arrive in time for October. Um, just because of shipping to Germany um, at the moment, it's a little bit complicated. Obviously, <laughs> like everything at the moment is complicated. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that'll get here soon and I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, so those are like the big three. And then I have some smaller ones that I might pick up um, if I feel like reading something quick. Um, <clears throat> the first of which is David Leverthin's The Mysterious Disappearance of Aiden S. As told to his brother, which is already a cool title. Um, <clears throat> It's a really quick, short one. It has like, what is it, like 200 pages. Um, obviously, it's David Leverton, so I'm just gonna assume that I'm gonna love it. The story of someone disappearing and reappearing under like mysterious circumstances sounds really interesting and intriguing. And also, like, it might make me paranoid <laughs> quite a bit, which is great. Just chasing all those wonderful things in the month of October, just nightmares, anxiety, paranoia, you know, bring it on, that's what Halloween is all about. <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, but yes, it does sound really intriguing and as I said, obviously I do love David Leverton, um, so I'm really excited to pick up this shorter one. Then I also have Weathering With You by Makoto Shinkai. This is the novel. Um, I have read the first one of the manga for this, but actually with his other story, Your Name, 
I did enjoy the novel more than I enjoyed the manga. So I'm excited to read the novel and see if that's the same in this case or if I want to continue reading the manga instead. Um, and basically why I thought this would match the October theme is because she controls the weather as far as I can see. Um, so it's kind of like a witch, I guess. I just really want to read this book <laughs> and I think she counts as a witch, so it works. It works. And speaking of manga, I have We Live part 6 and part 7 is set to come out in October as well. Um, this is a manga story um, that's kind of involving time travel and like scientific experiments. Basically our ma main character um, is in his late 20s and his life's not going too well and then he gets approached by like this mysterious science company who have a pill that makes him 17 again um, and he gets like a chance to start over and make his life better <laughs> than it was. Um, it's not as exciting as I expected, it's more like teenage life and school life and that kind of stuff but they are like the hints of the science company and the experiment in there um, so that's really like intriguing to see what happens and how it all connects and why this happened in the first place um, so I haven't read the sixth part yet and as I said the seventh part is also set to come out so I'm excited to continue reading this story and kind of in the like area of manga I have a Frankenstein comic um, that actually my colleague gifted me. It was really sweet. He um, had like this whole collection of these comic series and um, he asked me if I wanted to have the Frankenstein one because everyone at work knows <laughs> that I love that story and that it's like my thing. Um, and I was actually thinking about re reading it um, because I haven't in a really long time. I think it's been like at least two years since I've read Frankenstein. So I was already thinking about doing a reread um, and having a comic version is just a nice way to get back into the story of Frankenstein without the like time and effort of actually reading Frankenstein. <laughs> um, I still might do that at some point um, soon because I really do love the story. But it's nice to have like a nice little comic um, and yeah, just really really sweet of him to give me this um, and yeah I do miss the story so it'll be cool to go back into it. <clears throat> and I also have a short story collection. These are um, a bunch of German fantasy authors. Um, it's called Anders Welt and I bought this a few years ago because my favorite author Jenny Manien is in it. I have already read her story but I haven't read any of the others. <laughs> Um, and because it's a collection of fantasy authors, there are some like darker ones in there with like mysterical beings and dark magic and that kind of stuff. Um, so I figure in between like the big chunky books, it'll be nice to just yeah pick this up and like read one or two short stories. Um, also because I kind of feel bad <laughs> that I've only read like the one for my favorite author. I know that's okay and no, well, nobody's gonna check but I feel bad for the other authors in it so um, it also has like really pretty illustrations so I'm gonna pick that up um, in between the other ones. And the last one is actually um, yeah kind of negative <laughs> in the way that I tried to read this a couple years ago and I did not like it, not at all. And that is Loki, the novel by Mackenzie Lee. And I really enjoyed Mackenzie Lee's writing and I really love Loki. Also, this book is just really pretty. Um, it has deco edges and I mean, it's Loki. Um, and I was so excited for this book to come out. When it was announced, I was just thrilled and really, really happy about it. Um, and then I started and I just didn't connect to her way of writing Loki. He just seemed so small, if that makes sense. I don't really know how to put it, I'm not quite sure what put me off, but I did not feel like this was Loki. Um, so I stopped reading it and 
I've been looking at it ever since, just standing in my shelf, wanting to be wet or wanting to be DNF'd, just waiting for a decision. Um, and since I've recently watched the Loki TV show, which was fantastic, brilliant, amazing, um, I figured, you know what, that was kind of a new take on Loki and you got to see like his more vulnerable sides and his like other character traits. So maybe now I'm more open to this interpretation of Loki. Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure if I actually will like it. But I want to give it another try and if I don't like it this time around, I will do an effort and gift it to a friend. Um, but yeah, I want to give it another shot. And again, Loki kind of counts as a magician. Just, you know, in the sense of Halloween, Loki is a magician. So yeah, those are all the books I picked out for October, um, for the Halloween theme, for the Halloween time of year. As you saw, this was quite a big pile. Quite a few chunky boys in there. Why do I keep saying that? Big books. Quite a few big books in there. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely not gonna get around to reading all of those. But I do want to read all of them at some point. And as I said, I'm just gonna keep that pile next to my bed. And if I want to read something in the month of October, I'm gonna pick it from this TBR pile. And I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to reading all of these books. Um, I'm excited to get into them and to get into like the spooky, not really spooky, but like supernatural time of year. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm planning to read. Let me know if you have any spooky books to recommend or what you're gonna read uh, during the Halloween time. Let me know your TBRs and your recommendations down below. Um, and yeah, let's get into the Halloween atmosphere for reading. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it, I'm excited. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you always have a reason to smile, and I shall see you soon. Bye!